Yo, what's up, people? How's it going? It's Sandy Man here for another video game review. Today's game I'm looking at is Watch Dogs. I know I'm slow to the punch in reviewing Watch Dogs. It had a huge hype train following after some great showings at E3 a few years back, and when it was released, there was a bit of backlash for not living up to the hype, at least from what I can remember. And there were some arguments about the graphics not resembling the pre-release footage and such, but now that I have a PS4, I can finally review it and I don't need to deal with all that pre-release hype. Story. Watch Dogs follows Aiden Pierce, a hacker in futuristic Chicago who breaks into people's bank accounts and takes their money. He and his buddy try to steal money from a hotel, which angers the wrong people, and who decide to attack Aiden's family. His niece is killed in the assault, and Aiden blames himself. Now, he seeks justice and vengeance for his family, not letting anything get in his way. Aiden's motivation throughout this entire story is to avenge his niece. He quite obviously doesn't take loss as well, and his character is very confusing in that he murders a ton of people just to avenge one person. Sure, I understand it's his niece, but I mean, where are your morals, dude? His sister, on the other hand, the actual mother of the killed child, seems to be handling things quite well. You can't save Lena. I don't know how we're supposed to relate to this dude who just kills a ton of people out of blind rage and revenge. In the game itself, it tries to prevent you from harming civilians by having a bit of a morality system. Uh, like sleeping dogs, if you kill or injure civilians or police officers, you gain a bit of negativity and are perceived a bit more evil. But honestly, it's pretty much pointless. The story isn't bad in the game though, but I do wish the characters could have been more interesting. Aiden is a bit empty, and he is pretty boring compared to other characters in games like Saints Row or GTA. Supporting characters aren't really fleshed out enough either. They just show up to fix a problem or to make a new one. I have some information. Well, ain't you special? The problem is, I can't decrypt it. A good example of this lack of depth is that the game introduces a new character a little over halfway through the plot, who looks to be a new, bigger threat to Aiden, but the dude is only there for like two missions and he's gone. It's obvious he was just there to artificially pad out the game and make it longer, and that's just lazy from Ubisoft. Other people like the crazy redneck hacker guy is just forced into the plot to resolve some issues. There's just not enough time to be introduced to all these characters, and they all just feel shoehorned in because of it. Things move very quickly in this plot, and a lot of stuff just feels really rushed. If Ubisoft would have slowed down and developed the characters a little bit more and gave more backstory and depth, it probably wouldn't have been as bad. Gameplay. The main draw of Watch Dogs is the ability to hack into the city. You can change street lights, raise blockers, blow up steam pipes, hack into phones, hack into cameras, raise bridges, all to just stop a bad guy that you're chasing or that's chasing you. Doing all these are fun, but outside of missions, there's not really much use for them. You don't really want to be starting police chases because then you'd be losing morality points, so there's not really a reason to be using hacks while free roaming. You can also run into random missions where you can stop crimes or assault gang hideouts. Those are fun and add a lot more replayability to the game. You get money in this game by hacking into bank accounts and by completing missions. I barely spend money in other free roaming games, but in this one, I actually never bought anything once. There is literally no use for money in this game. You can buy weapons, but you'll never need to because enemies drop them, and weapons always seem to have an unlimited stream of ammo, and you can't spend money on anything else that I could see. Maybe the car on demand app costs money, but I never need to check it out since fast cars are abundant and never far away. You can't customize anything about Aiden either, so I guess money and by extension things that give you money are all just completely worthless. The upgrade system is also a bit useless outside of the hacking skill tree. You can improve your driving skill by, say, upgrading so you resist tire blowouts, but I think I only had a blowout once in the entire game. You can also upgrade the length that you're in bullet time while driving, which I still didn't use that much while playing the game. In the combat skill tree, you can do things like improve your weapon switch speed or steady your aim, but I never knew to do that either since I never felt like I wasn't able to hit people or switch weapons fast enough. The online, though, is one of the best parts of this game. You can be randomly invaded by other players who hack into your phone and start downloading your data, and you have to find them and kill them. The game doesn't explicitly tell you you've been invaded either, so you don't know you're being hacked until they start downloading your data. It's easy to figure out if someone's in your game though because your bullet time in the car doesn't work, and going to menus or the map doesn't pause the game. It's fun being surprised by some of those, so I personally try to avoid finding out if anyone's in. You can also be invaded and followed. This never happened to me, but I did do it to someone else. You have to track a target and watch them. I'm guessing nobody did it because it isn't as fun as the other online modes. It's a lot harder and a bit more boring compared to the regular hacking invasion, so I can see why it's not as popular. You can also participate in races and they kind of hold on to the flag game. 
Races are pretty much what you expect them to be. Get from point A to point B, trying to use your hacks to mess people up. The flag holding game requires you to hack a file. There's only one in the game, so each team is trying to get a hold of it. You can take the file when it's like 99% done being hacked, and win the game by holding onto it when it hits 100%. So if your team fails horribly for the entire game, but you happen to kill the hacker and take it away from him when he's about to be done, you can win. I don't really agree with that, but I guess there's not much you can do if you don't want the games to be lasting an excruciatingly long time. So the online is really fun, but the gameplay is pretty standard. You can't fly helicopters or airplanes, but the inclusion of upgrades and hackings makes up for it. It's nice to mix up the basic formula once in a while, but I wish there was more interesting things happening in free roaming that you didn't have to be prompted into doing. Graphics and design. Watch Dogs is made by Ubisoft, who also obviously make Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed has developed really good techie graphics, because a lot of the time it takes place while you're in the Animus. This good understanding of glitchy design bled over into Watch Dogs really, really well, where they pull off a lot of cool effects that all fit into the atmosphere of this game. The music in this game is really great as well, and it all fits perfectly, and I never thought any of it sounded bad or out of place. The game's graphics itself, though, doesn't really blow me away, and while it all does look good, it's pretty much standard for AAA free roaming games. The more unique locations, such as the overgrown warehouse area and the bayou where you find the redneck hacker, are a bit more interesting. But there's pretty much no reason to go to the sticks when there's only a couple missions to take place there, and there's nothing to do in the warehouse area except go into your base. Conclusion. Watch Dogs isn't as special of revolutionary as Ubisoft would want us to believe. The plot is pretty standard, the characters are pretty standard, and the game is pretty standard. Standard isn't bad though. The online game modes were really fun to play, the hacking was pretty interesting, and I really enjoyed the entire game. I wouldn't say it brings enough news to the table to interest anyone who doesn't already like pre roaming games, but what it does bring is solid and fun, and it's a nice break from GTA. Thanks again for watching this Watch Dogs uh, review. Uh, hopefully I was good enough. I felt like I wasn't as thorough as I was in the Destiny video, but I think it's fine. I, th I said everything that I needed to say. Uh, well, if you like this review, I'm going to have a lot more. I'm going to try every week, but I know I suck at schedule, so it's probably not going to happen. But uh, if you click that one right there, you can see the Destiny one. YouTube doesn't let you make annotations that take up the whole entire little area right there. I don't know. I need to adjust this little overlay and make it smaller. But I'm just rambling. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe, like, and comment if you want to. If you don't, it's okay. But. All right. See ya.